Good morning, this is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. It's early in the morning here, and I am out in my Portland, Oregon permaculture garden propagating comfrey cuttings. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about growing comfrey and a little bit about how you can propagate it in your own garden. I am along the fence here in the backyard of my garden and I have all of these baby comfrey plants that are just coming up and I would like to make divisions and not only increase the number that I have in my garden but also put some out for sale or um, if you need to take them from our farm stand. So I need to make new babies of them. So Comfrey is such an important plant. It is not only a great insectary plant, all kinds of pollinators love it, not just honeybees, but oh my goodness, the bumblebees absolutely love it. Longhorn bees, I've seen hummingbirds feeding from it. It's just such a great source of food for our pollinators. And it also is a plant that has this really large root that is really good at breaking up dense clay soil. And here in Portland, Oregon, we have this kind of alluvial backfill where it's just like big rocks and straight clay. And so what we end up with here is, is soil that's like just really compact, especially if you're somewhere like, like where I am here, where it's been a backyard for a long time. It's had lawn on it. It has had you know, a hundred years of people compacting the soil through the techniques that they use to garden or have a lawn and just through human activity, construction, etc., etc. You have that kind of compaction with clay soil where it just, it literally becomes unworkable. Well, comfrey is a plant that you can put in the garden, just like rhubarb, big roots that are big and strong, bust up the compacted soil and create channels for drainage and improve the drainage in your garden. Comfrey also has the additional benefit that you can take the leaves and you can make a really rich a nitrogen fertilizer with them. So you ferment the leaves, they become a high nitrogen plant food for your garden or foliar spray for your fruit trees. And we're gonna let the Amazon truck go by. Okay, so I'm standing here in this section of the poultry run. They are turned out of it for now. You can see they are working back in here. This area is kind of resting and I'm working on trying to get some cover crops established. But normally uh, the ducks and chickens get rotated in here and that's why I have comfrey all along the fence. So this part of the garden, they don't really get access to, but all along the fence here, I have comfrey because it's such great duck feed and it comes up and creates this screen. So I have just like this, this fencing made out of scrap material and the comfrey comes and fills in really nicely. It provides uh, food for pollinators, food for my ducks in particular, and tons and tons and tons of chop and drop mulch. So I just want to come in here with my shovel and pop up some sections. All right, so here is my chunk of comfrey root. This is a pretty substantial chunk, but just this little patch here will have a root network that goes down probably two or three feet and uh, branches out from here, from the crown. So even though I took this chunk here, I didn't get all of the root. You can see where it's been cut off. And so this area will regenerate really quickly. One of the benefits of comfrey in your garden is its resiliency and its ability to bounce back. This is also what makes it frustrating for some folks because um, once you have it planted somewhere, you will have it forever. It's almost impossible to eradicate all of the roots. So you can see here, I'm gonna take this and split it again right here and then get two starts from this. But be aware as well, any little piece of root, the size of your thumbnail, or even, even as narrow as the diameter of your pinky, can make a whole new plant. So when you are in the garden and you're dividing this, oh, hello, little worm, and you're dividing this, you want to, let's put you back, let's put you back real quick, boop. Um, you need to be careful that you aren't chucking little bits of this root everywhere. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna split it in half 
and then we're gonna go pot it up. Now the comfy that I have in my garden is Russian Bocking 14. It's a sterile variety and it does not set seed. If you have a non-sterile variety, make sure that you are aware of the fact that it can really kind of go all over your garden. Be aware of what you're putting in, be aware of the habits of the plant, be aware of how prolific it can be and plan appropriately. Permaculture really emphasizes our interconnected relationship with the garden. And that means having an intimate knowledge of the plants we choose to bring in and put into our spaces. So Russian Bocking 14 Comfrey is not uh, able to set seed. It's not able to uh, throw itself around the garden the way a self-seeding plant is. The only way it can be propagated is by root divisions. So it flowers nicely, you never get seeds. But every little piece of root can make a whole new plant. So when you're propagating it, you need to take root cuttings and that's the way that you get new plants. So. I have heard some horror stories. A friend of mine told me about how her mother took a rototiller to a patch of garden that had dormant comfrey in it. You do not want to do that. If you chop up those little bits of um, root and fling them around your garden, it's just like flinging seeds everywhere. You will get plants everywhere. Every little bit of root um, ends up landing in your garden. And I'll talk more about that in a minute because it really is quite a small piece of root that can make a whole new plant. All right, so here's my little setup. Uh, please forgive all of the fact that we have wood and things everywhere. We don't have a garage, and so we're in the middle of building a greenhouse and the middle of working on some projects, including we try and strip old pallets uh, that are in good shape whenever possible to use free sources of wood for our building projects. But since I don't have a garage, they end up in my propagation area um, and in my future outdoor kitchen, which is perpetually halfway finished. So this is where I'm working kind of perched on this pallet that we're stripping. And I have some tree collared cuttings that I've rooted. And these are my comfrey cuttings. So I'm gonna be adding some more to the babies that I've already started. So I'm gonna take this and split it and get two babies off of it. When you split your comfrey, you can't go wrong. You just take the shovel. I'm gonna try and get in between these two crowns here. All right, so I've ended up with one piece here, one piece here, and then this little chunk of root here. As I said a moment ago, this will make a whole new plant, but I'm gonna plant it a little bit differently than I am any of the sections that have greenery on them. I don't wanna let this just get chucked out into the garden or I will have comfrey where I don't want it. And again, if you are thinking about coming and getting some from our farm stand, if you're thinking about adding comfrey to your garden, Keep in mind, it's like horseradish. If you plant it somewhere, it will have that spot as its home forever. So for these sections here, I wanna pop off the leaves because we're looking at a, a section now where we've removed most of the roots. Keep in mind, the roots are many times longer and deeper than the length of the foliage. So I've really removed a lot of the roots and I wanna reduce the foliage so that we don't have the plant trying to suck up water from non-existent roots. So I remove most of the foliage. I might actually remove this one too. Pop this puppy off. So now I've removed most of the foliage. This is ready to plant. And I'm just gonna put it in a four inch pot. I have some 100% compost here. So that's it, I've got it potted up now and it's gonna go live in here. I always put a little bit of wood chips if I can around the top. My compost is really moist, so I don't need to uh, water it right now. And you can see these are ones that I potted up a couple days ago and they're really going strong and doing very well. But when I wanna pot up the section that's just root, I'm gonna treat it a little bit differently. So here's my section with the root, but no foliage. So I need to leave a little bit of the root exposed sticking up above the ground. And this will, I'm gonna get this root hair stuck underneath here. Oop, there you go, root hair. This will start to put out new foliage. It will take longer 
to get going, obviously, than the parts that already have a good strong crown and some foliage. But this will make a new plant. I'll just have to be a little bit more patient. It'll take a little bit longer until it's ready to go out in my garden. But just if you are uh, using a root division, you want to go ahead and leave a little bit sticking up above the soil. Ta-da! And that will make a new place. Keep these in a sheltered location. Give them several weeks to start establishing new good roots. And then some of these will be going out in the farm stand and some of them will be going out in my so garden. So thanks for watching this morning. I have to go in and obviously clean up and then take my kid to a doctor's appointment. But I plan on being out in the garden most of the afternoon if I can. It's gonna be lovely here in zone 8B. You can hear all the birds singing. There's tons of song sparrows out. I hope that you're enjoying your spring and I hope you'll come back and check out some more of my videos on permaculture gardening and permaculture philosophy. Thanks.